You're listening to Spreaker Web Radio. It's showtime, and you're listening to Florida Real Estate Radio, where you'll hear about what's relevant and where to find opportunities and solutions in Florida real estate. Right now, live in studio, here's your host, Brian Heckman. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I am Brian Heckman, and coming to you today from sunny Tampa. And you are going to be so happy you tuned in, as you're going to learn a couple things today very specific about Florida real estate that you might not yet know, but... You will after listening for the next several minutes. So today we brought in a super special guest for you. I have Mary Diaz here in studio. Mary is a veteran real estate agent with Remax and she is gonna share with you a little bit about the current market and then why trusting in your real estate agent is such an important thing, especially in this market. So Mary, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's so great to have you here. So why don't we start? Um, Why don't you just kind of go through briefly sharing how you got into real estate when that was and and ultimately you know why you're still in real estate today you know why why clients do business with you versus somebody else well i got into real estate basically after a career in banking i was in banking for over 20 plus years and i started i got out of banking in 1993 and uh i, I decided well what am i going to do now because I, I decided to leave banking i didn't want to uh, mergers acquisitions were not for me anymore so my husband says, why don't you try real estate? I said, well, that probably is good because I have a very good memory. I remember a lot of things and homes and names and people. And uh, the financing part, because I was in banking for over 25 years. So I said, okay. I started in banking in, in uh, I'm sorry, in real estate in 1994. And I've been there ever since. Very And I've cool. been with Remax for over... 17 years, 18 years. I started with another company first, and then I moved to Remax right after that. And so that's all been in the Tampa market, right? All have been in the Tampa market, okay. yes. And how long have you been in Tampa for? I've been in the Tampa area since 1982. I'm all originally right. from Miami. Okay. And now David also works with you in real estate? Yes. Your husband? Yes. He, he was also a banker. Perfect. All right. The bankers gone realtors. Yes. Bankers. Recovering bankers. That's like right. I myself. <laughs> all right. So that's, a, that's some great background information on you, Mary. So let's do this let's dive into you know the purpose that we're here today and kind of why why we, i was really eager that that you said you, you can come be a guest in the show here what's going on with the current market what, what are you seeing you know right out of the gate here in january well the market has definitely changed it has really evolved from let's say a couple of years ago where right now the market the prices have gone up inventory is at its lowest level i've ever seen in years in about two, two or three years 2010 was probably the highest inventory, 09, 08. Right now, we're like 50, 40, 50% drop in inventory for what we used to have. So there's a lot of people looking to buy, very little inventory. So when a good property comes, comes on the market, there's tons of offers at, at the same time, 15, 20 offers sometimes. So some 15, 20 offers 15, 20 on each 20 property. 15, 20 offers on each property. It depends upon the property. The lower end sure. property is going to have a lot more offers because there are a lot of investors that are jumping in mm-hmm. and then sometimes it is hard for owner occupants to get those types of properties because most of the investors are going to be paid cash right so it's a little it depends upon the price range but the higher the price range the less offers you're going to get but if the house is priced right in the right location in the right condition it will sell and you probably will have multiple offers Gotcha. You have to aggress- You have to price it right. That's the most important thing. And sometimes owners do not understand that whatever market you're in, you cannot price the house the wrong way. You have to price it right. Doesn't mean that you're going to give it away. It means that you're going to get the highest price for the home in the least amount of time, and probably you will get multiple offers. Gotcha. And so a big part of that is when you come in and and look at work, doing business with somebody or taking on their listing is a matter of all the data that you pull as far as what is the right price. Yes, we have a lot of data. We have a lot of market statistics like days on the market, average sale price, all kinds. And we have it by zip code. We have it by size home. We have it by bedrooms, baths. We, we have a lot of statistics that we can share with the sellers and the buyers. And that way, it's not just our opinion, it's data. It's actual data that's substantiating you know, what we're saying. So if we present the data to them, they're, they're seeing what I'm seeing, 
and they're not going to make a mistake in pricing the home too high or in lowballing an offer, you know, putting it. an offer that is very, very low, and they're not going to get it. Got it. Very interesting perspective. I think a lot of people don't realize, uh, especially people that, you know, we're in this all day long, but people that aren't necessarily buying or selling every day and every week, they don't realize necessarily that, you know, what is the, what's the temperature like with, with the market out there and the fact that there really is such low inventory. Yeah, very low inventory, especially in condos to have seen, I specialize a lot in the South Tampa area uh -huh. and the inventory in South Tampa condos have dwindled just like the single family homes. But it is amazing what prices have done. I, I, I do a lot of business in one particular condo complex and the prices have gone up, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, you know, in let's say a year and a half. Wow. Amazing. It's just not that the prices have gone up that much, it's just that the inventory is not there. Mm -hmm. So what's there is priced higher and they're getting it. Right. So it's and the in particular in different areas of Tampa you're gonna see different types of inventory. A lot of short sales and bank owned properties are gonna be in some areas of town where in other areas of town you're not gonna have that. Right. So it's depends on each area of town, the market is going to be a different market. So you have to have somebody that will guide you through the process and will give you good advice right. to make a good decision. Perfect. Well, great information. It's, uh, it's, it's really interesting um, hearing a take of somebody that's in the market that's you know entrenched in this. I mean, wow, you've been here for a long time. A long so time. I've seen a lot yeah, of different so you've markets. Seen, right. You've seen up and down. Uh, great, great information. So let's look into... Um, Let's look at another question here. So what what is the one thing that potential home buyers should know when starting the process of purchasing purchasing a home? What would you say is like that that one thing that they really like need to know going into it? Well, very important thing is that I always tell when I speak to any potential client that I'm going to have, a lot of people think that they could work with two or three realtors at a time and I think that's very that's not the right approach to take. You don't have to work with the same, the very first person you meet, but you need to be able to match your needs and desires with the realtor that's going to help you. Not every realtor is it's going to be the right person for you, and not every client is going to be the right fit for the realtor. So, I always like to meet the client at my office or at another location if it's what they want to do. But and I ask five questions, and the five questions I ask are very important questions related to what, what is it that they want in a home? Starting with number one, whatever is number one, number two, number three, five questions. And from those five questions, I can determine basically what their motivation is, what they really want in a home, and if it's price or if it's location or if it's amenities. I know a little bit about them. I will never take out a client without talking to them. I always meet with them. They need to tell me their story and I need to tell them how I work. So we work together. It's right. a partnership. And we're in this together, either a seller or a buyer. We're in this together. So with a buyer, it's a little different situation because it's a very emotional situation when they're buying a home. A seller is pricing it right, doing whatever he needs to do as far as to sell the home from staging to uh, getting rid of some... Um, stuff that they have in the home, storage, whatever it is that it's needed. But it's a, it's a little, little different approach, but it's basically the same thing. We have to sit down, we have to talk, and we have to decide what it is that they want. So let me ask you this. So you mentioned these five questions, and I know that uh, you and David have both got such a giving spirit, and you know it's kind of in your DNA to help people. <laughs> so there's going to be other agents that are listening to this. Could you share maybe like one of those questions? Because um, you, you talked to me a little bit about those, and I think that's a key thing that most not most, many agents kind of miss on the front end, setting people up and setting the right expectation with people, whether they're a first time buyer, never done it before, mm -hmm. or it's somebody that hasn't bought or sold in five to 10 years. It's a totally different game totally. right now from the real estate, from the selling, from the title, from the mortgage perspective, of course, it's a, it's a totally different game. So would you mind sharing like, what's one of those five questions that you ask that's just something to kind of get some of the information from the buyers um, or the sellers to help you kind of be able to gauge and, and tailor how you uh, how Well, you with the that. sellers, I always ask, what made you buy this home? What was it that made you That's buy this question. home? Because I may be seeing something different than what they're seeing sure. or what they saw <laughs> when they purchased. Right. So I'm going to say, what is it that you liked? So they'll tell me, curve appeal, rooms, area. And from there, I know what, what they saw in the home that I may not see, but I understand what their viewpoint. So it will be this, probably the same 
when somebody walks in the house, they're probably going to see the same thing. So that's one of the questions I ask the seller. You know, motivation is very important for the seller. What's your motivation to sell? If there's no motivation to sell, there's no urgency and there's no motivation to price the home right. So sometimes you have to decide if you want to list that property, if you want to walk away or if you want to keep in touch whenever the day is ready for them to move on. Right. So the seller is very important. The questions are very different, but it's more tailored to their motivation, their interest, the home, what they saw, what they have in the home. And uh, with a buyer, it's such an emotional situation. I ask, what is it the number one most important thing that you have to have in the home? That's number good. one, number one, it could be whatever they, and then from there, I ask a second question, why is that important? And so when they give me that answer, then I probe again, why does that mean, why is it that important? So I kind of go three layers or four layers down, why is right. it important? Right. And then I find out exactly what it is, why it's so important. Right. From asking that original question. Which really leads you more into a consultant and really finding yes. out the need and going to meet right. the need. Right. And That's sometimes great. we agree. I mean, I have a couple a couple of times that through the process, it has been this, we, we, we agreed that we uh, <laughs> mutually agreed that it wasn't the right match. Right, right. Because from the start, if you know it's not the right match from the start, it's so much better. Perfect. And they, you know, they could find another realtor that could help them and they will be a better match for them. Absolutely. Well, that's a, see, there it is. There's the giving spirit right there. I asked you for one question. You gave me three or four of them in there that you asked. So, uh, you have to listen a lot right. in real estate, especially with buyers. You have to listen right. a lot. And especially first-time home buyers are going to be, they just don't know the process and how it goes. And you have to guide them through the whole process and um, advising them the best way you can as far as what's next and what's next. I always say, okay, this is what you need to do now. But this is what you need to do next and next and right. next. So we go through the process. I, I try to make it as simple as possible so that they won't get overwhelmed mm -hmm. through the process because they could be overwhelmed. It doesn't matter if you overwhelm myself, but they don't need to be overwhelmed because the, the process is so overwhelming as it is already. Absolutely. So I try to make it easier. I try to take the stress out of the whole transaction and uh, let them see that it's not stressful if you just take one step at a time. Exactly. And then you're also with the right person that can guide you through the process, not somebody that is just there to sell you the home and move on and never see you again. Very and that's important. Cool. Absolutely. You're, you're there for them through the whole process and after the process. Yep. Awesome, it's wonderful. awesome information. You know, when you get a call from somebody that you sold them a house five years ago, like the other day I had that happen, and it was like awesome because they remember me and uh, that's so important you know the the they they liked what what I had the way I handled the transaction you know what um, we're kind of wrapping wrapping down on time here but um, I would love to have you come back and talk a little bit more about that that is something I read a statistic that um, for for real estate and for mortgage professionals that it's something like 70% of people would do business yes. with you again but yeah. they they just forget about you because they, they right. don't know, they forget after the process. They they buy a house, they pay their mortgage every month, but they don't necessarily, they don't remember us unless we keep in touch yes. with them. So maybe we can talk about that next time, like how yeah, you- Yeah, follow up. How, yeah, how you used to stay, stay in touch with your, your folks. And I mean, I know you've got a great system for that. So um, would love to do this. Hey, th this is uh, this has been a ton of fun though, um, getting to know you a little bit and, and allowing you to come in here and, and kind of share um, with people, uh, what your expertise is, and then some of the stuff that makes you a little bit different. Those five questions I just think are are just just great information there. So, um, how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way? Website, email, phone. What's uh, what's the best way? My website it's uh, Tampa Today Real Estate dot com. Tampa Today Real Estate dot com. Okay. My email is Mary at Tampa Today Real Estate dot com. It's Perfect. easy. It's the same as the website. Just great. Mary in the front. And my cell number it's a one three two four five nine six seven seven that's a one three two four five nine six seven seven you can text me email me call me I answer the phone answer the I phone I do Imagine answer the that. phone there unless I'm with somebody I I usually if I'm showing property or if I'm with in a meeting I do not answer the phone but I always answer my phone and that's one thing that my clients always say she answers the phone Dine, I do oh my <laughs> well we are out of time for today um, 
thank you out there for listening to Florida Real Estate Radio, where you'll hear about what's relevant and where to find opportunities and solutions in Florida real estate right now. I'm your host, Brian Heckman. It's been a lot of fun having Mary Diaz here from Remax. And remember that we're all in this together. So let's grow together. Have an awesome day.